Okay, in this section we are going to learn how to um, solve percent problems by using proportions. In the last section that we worked on, we were learning how to set the proportions up. And so we should be, hopefully by this point, pretty good at that. And now we're actually going to go ahead and solve. So, just as a refresher. When we set this up using proportions, we always have to have over here on the right the percent, whatever it is. So if they tell you something is 25%, we'd put 25 here as our percent. Always over 100. And then on the left hand side, this would be our part and the whole. And another way that we could think about that is is and of. So we're talking about a smaller portion or I guess it could be larger in some cases if we have over 100%. But um, if we're talking about like 12 students in a classroom, then 12 would be our whole. And if we say like 6 out of those 12, then 6 would be the part out of the whole of 12. So that's why we worked on the in the last section on really setting these up um, because that's probably the hardest part. Once we get them set up, then it's not too bad to solve. So let's get started and see what we can do here. This one says find the part using the multiplication shortcut. Okay, we're just going to be talking about it as um, the proportion method. We're not going to be using any um, you know, cool language there to uh, make it sound different than what it is. It really is just using the proportion method. Okay, so setting this up, I know I'm going to have to have a proportion and we know we're going to have to put the percent over 100. So here we're finding 35% of 120 test tubes. So my percentage is 35. That's always going to go on top here of the 100. The percent goes over 100. Over on the left is our part of the whole. Or we can also think about it as the is and the of. It depends on how you want to look at it. If we're looking for 35% of 120 test tubes, 120 test tubes, that's our entire amount. We're looking for a portion of that. So our 120 is our whole. We're going to write an X for our unknown amount here. Now this is a matter of solving this using that proportion method. So we're going to be multiplying X times 100. We're using that cross product idea and then e should equal the cross product of 120 times 35. Now why my threes are not looking very good today. Now we can continue solving. So we're going to do what we can here. X times 100 we can't really do anything with. But we can go ahead and multiply out the 120 times the 35. That would be 4200. Now we want to get x alone because that's what we're trying to find. So we're going to do the opposite of multiplying by 100, which would be to divide by 100. So on the left hand side we're left with x equals, and on the right hand side we have 4200 divided by 100, which would be 42. So now we always want to, when we're done, make sure that this sounds reasonable. If I want to know 35% of 120, well just think about that. Would that be a smaller than 120 or more than? It would be smaller, wouldn't it? Another way that I look at percentage problems is just using some logic to try and see whether my answer is reasonable or not. If we were looking for 50% of 120, that would be 60. So since this is a smaller percentage, then I want fewer than that even, fewer than 60. So 42 seems like a reasonable amount for this problem. That's what I'm talking about when I say we want to use some logic and see whether our answer is credible or not. You just want to look at it and kind of make a guesstimation and, and help them because you can, you can catch a lot of your errors that way if you can think about it logically.